Hi there, how's it going? Hello. So you guys are out and about preaching the gospel of the Watchtower again? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm here once again to present to you the history of the Watchtower. Um, are you, how familiar are you guys with the history of the Watchtower? So actually, I think that we've talked to you before. Okay, I haven't talked to you yet, though. Yeah, so yeah, you know what? I've talked to you before. <laughs> this is the Watchtower public... I'm going to ignore you. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Published by the Watchtower and Track Society. Um, this book here talks about uh, Best Sarim, if you're familiar with Best Sarim, how it was built um, for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who were supposed to, and hence, expect those men, faithful men of old, back from the dead any day now. And who ended up living in the mansion? It wasn't Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We were supposed to return from the dead. It was the leader and president of the Watchtower organization, uh, Rutherford. And um, just as your campaign right now is uh, this, talking about take a free copy, God's kingdom, what it may uh, mean for you. Your campaign back when uh, Rutherford was the leader and the president of the Watchtower was millions now living will never die. And uh, he published a book on that as well called Millions Now Living Will Never Die, a, co a copy of which I have. I didn't bring it with me because it's old and I didn't want to wreck it. But you can look it up for yourself and uh, have access to it as well. So even that title and that campaign that you guys had, Millions Living Now Will Never Die, that was totally false. That was a false prophecy. One of the numerous false prophecies of the Watchtower organization. There's so many of them. It's hard to keep track. I think you guys, of all the organizations out there, I think you guys broke the record on the amount of false prophecies. The basic reason that I changed my mind was that Jehovah's Witnesses claim to be speaking for God. The Bible says if you are speaking for God, the prophecies that you make, the statements that you make have to be absolutely true. They have to happen. Jehovah's Witnesses announced the end of the world for 1874, 1879, 1881, 1914, 1918, 1925, 1975. And now they display that new disease called loss of memory. They can't remember ever predicting the end of the world. So, um, I really hope that you guys take it to heart. I do care about you guys and I don't want you to follow a, f a false prophet. For Jesus Christ warned us that people perish because they refuse to love the truth and that Jesus Christ warned us to watch out and not be deceived by false prophets. And that is what you're doing, um, doing today, is you're being deceived by the Watchtower organization that has acted as a false prophet over and over again. And the greatest proof for this is Watchtower published material, which I have with me today, showcased in the Watchtower organization, um, Watchtower magazine, 1914. The generation that will not pass away. These showcasing the people that work at the Watchtower. Unfortunately, all these people have passed away. That's been over 102 years ago. That generation is gone. And yet, still, in 1984, the Watchtower was holding on to this false prophecy. Not only that, they actually say, hey, right here, Jehovah's prophetic word through Jesus Christ, this generation of 1914 will by no means pass away until all these things occur. That was another whopper of a false prophecy. So much so that the Watchtower organization and leadership, the governing body, um, basically changed the very purpose for the Watchtower magazine being um, written. If I ask you guys what is the purpose of the Awake magazine, the Watchtower magazine, here it says, most important in regards to the Wake magazine. This magazine builds confidence in the Creator, Jehovah's promise of a peaceful and secure new world before the generation that saw the events of 1914 pass away. So ask yourself, why is this, this was the most important reason why the Awake magazine was um, the most important. This magazine builds confidence in Jehovah's, the Creator's promise of a peaceful and secure new world before the generation that saw the events of 1914 pass away. Why does the Awake magazine, the Watchtower organization, the governing body who you hold to, no longer publish this in their Awake magazine? 
The reason is because it was a false prophecy that they taught for decades. That you guys will really take this to heart and take heed to the words of Jesus Christ when he warned us to watch out and not be deceived by false prophets. And to recognize the watchtower as a false prophet based on Jehovah has given you the greatest evidence for this of the Watchtower organization as being a false prophet is Watchtower published material. It is my hope and prayer that you guys will flee from the Watchtower organization and believe the true gospel and in the true Christ and not uh, a false Christ and a false gospel proclaimed by the Watchtower. So once again, I ask you guys, how can you put your trust in an organization that says that dead people are going to rise from the dead, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and others, take control of the affairs of earth, your organization is so confident that this will happen, your organization is so confident that this will happen that they build a mansion and that it is now held in trust for the occupancy of those princes on their return. Even the name Basarim means house of the princes. So it was built for people that were supposed to rise from the dead, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I really hope that that sticks in your mind and it really, really sticks in your mind that your organization predicted people coming back from the dead, set dates over and over again. And when it didn't happen, they just extended it. And then of course claim new light and then extend it again. That's not new light, that's a false prophecy. That's being a false prophet. Hence, those faithful men of old may be expected back from the dead any day now. And in the book, Millions Now Living Will Never Die, they said 1925. Is Jesus in Matthew 7, 15 said, Beware of false prophets who are going to come to you. How? All dressed up like Christians, sheep, but they're killers, they're ravenous wolves. Deuteronomy 18, 21 says, how can we recognize someone who is not speaking for Yahweh if he says that he is speaking for Yahweh? And if he makes, says a word that does not come to true or come to pass, the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. This gives us courage now to say, hey, you said in millions now living will never die. Abraham will be here. We can confidently expect Abraham to be here in 1925. In 1926, right. we can say, hey, fella, you're a false prophet, the one that Jesus predicted. In your leader's book, Rutherford's book, Millions Now Living Will Never Die, quote, therefore, we may confidently expect that 1925 will mark the return of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the faithful prophets of old. So dead men rising from the dead, taking control of the affairs of the earth and other books like this one, The New World and Salvation, talking about the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob returning from the dead and taking control. And who ends up living in the beautiful mansion built for the princes? Bessarim, which means house of the princes. Once again, not Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but the leader of the Watchtower organization. Uh, coming back to this thing of being a true or a false prophet, all right, what is the criteria then? All right, test of a prophet is if he says he got the message from God yeah. and it's false, he's a false prophet. You don't even need that message from God. That just plain. How do we know it's false? If it doesn't happen. Okay, words, if it doesn't happen. Right. All right. They said that Abraham would be here in 1925 and he would live in San Diego. They built him a house. Run that by me again. <laughs> in the book, Millions Now Living Will Never Die, page 89, it says, We can confidently expect the return of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They built a house for him in San Diego. I even slept there. Can you mind, imagine? Uh, uh, wait, wait, we just got to get this straight. You're talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the Old Testament. What were, they were going to come back from the dead? Yes. All of these men who lived prior to John the Baptist, from, starting from John the Baptist back to Adam, they were all supposed to arrive Why in San Diego. Why were they going to come back and go and live in San Diego? They're going to be princes in all the earth. Yeah. They were going to be the princes. Right. What does that mean? Right. The, the earth was going to be fumigated and they would everybody ruler, huh? except the princes right. and Jehovah's Witnesses. When was that to take place? <laughs> well, eight different times. <laughs> eight different times. The one that we're talking about is 1925. And they actually built a home 
for Abraham, filled it with mahogany furniture, and Judge Rutherford moved in when Abraham refused to show up. John, <laughs> no lie. Okay. one of the things that Deuteronomy says, not only that come to pass, but come true, they have to say things that are true. And for a long time, they said this home called Beth Sarim, House of Princes in San Diego, was for these faithful men of old, mentioned in Hebrews 11. Then in their 1975 yearbook, they said no, they didn't even mention anything about princes. They said this house was built for Judge Rutherford, for him to go as a, a home away what, from Brooklyn. What do the people and I were born into the Jehovah's Witness religion? In fact, Joan's parents lived through 1925 and 1914. And when we began reading the old books in the attic, Joan says, Mom, you were selling this book from house to house, telling people the world's going to end in 1925 and Abraham would be here. She says, yes, but we didn't believe it. No, not in 26, but you believed it in 23 and 22 and 1918. <laughs> Our own parents lied to us. They actually lied to us. I said, this is an interesting quote from 1968 from The Awake magazine. True, there had been those in times past who have predicted the end of the world, even announcing a specific date, yet nothing has happened. The end did not come. And they were guilty of false prophesying. Why? What was missing? Missing from such people was God's truth and the evidence that he was using and guiding them. So even the Awake magazine acknowledges by its own track record, if you look back in the history and take a look and hold it to this statement that the Awake magazine has made, that they are guilty of false prophesying and that such people do not have God's truth and he was not guiding them. That is the Watchtower organization. We consider it an established truth that the final end of the kingdoms of this world and the full establishment of the kingdom of God will be accomplished by the end of AD 1914. Once again, that didn't happen. You can look it up. Where is your founder buried? Do you guys know? Have you seen it? You can see his name, his picture, his placard, where he is buried. And then you can see the monument to um, the Watchtower organization with the plaque and symbol of the Watchtower on it, Watchtower track and uh, Bible Society right on it, and it's a pyramid. A monument to the false prophecy of the Watchtower organization that stands even today. Not the way of salvation, no forgiveness in following a false prophet and a false Christ and a false gospel. Founder of the Watchtower, uh, who came up with the 1914 date. Originally, he said it was going to be Armageddon. And that never obviously happened. Armageddon did not happen in 1914. Students preached that a time of global anarchy would come, which would culminate in the end of the system of things. They believed that around that time, the congregation would be taken to heaven. They realized that 1914 had a significance uh, it meant the end of the Gentile times. Now, at that time, they felt that perhaps the, the work would be finished and uh, they would go home, as it were. So they were looking forward to a time of reward. At Brooklyn Bethel, on October 2nd, 1914, Charles Russell made a monumental announcement. The Gentile times have ended. Their kings have had their day. expectations were still running high. Many of the Bible students were hoping for an immediate heavenly reward. And I might just say, my mother, she was ready to sell up everything in the home because she thought that the end was coming in 1940. And her feelings were that of a lot of the brothers back there. Obviously, false to put your trust in this organization. Even your former governing body member, Raymond Franz, documents in his book called um, Crisis of Conscience, the long, long, long list of false prophecies of the Watchtower and the inner workings of the governing body and how corrupt it truly was.